Hey guys, D Hammy here again, and I'm going to be presenting you with another revision guide. And this time it's going to be digital technology for the A level and AS1, and it's going to be specifically for the CS spec. Our first topic will be the software crisis. The software crisis is a mismatch between what the software can deliver and the capacities of the computer system as well as the, ex the expectations of their users. The main factors affecting it is the current system is no longer suitable, the business has expanded, the current system is, is inflexible, the technical support is too expensive or, the, or it's outdated and the new technology doesn't support the old system. The IEEE standard is a software engineering standard that needs to be adhered to in the design of any new software system. System development is the designing, creating and developing of a working IT system and a computer system consists of hardware, software, data and users. This is a diagram of the system life cycle. Software engineering is the application of engineering to the development of software and a systematic method as a solution to the software crisis. Projects fail because they run over time, they run over the budget, they're of poor quality, they're not made much use of and they have unrealistic targets. Our second topic is going to be the job roles and the development of a system. The job roles are the project manager, the systems analyst and the programmer. The project manager has to plan the activities that need to be completed, they allocate tasks, they estimate the time and budget, they also monitor progress and quality and they select the team, the motivation of team members also. Their characteristics include they're good at planning, they're good at motivating, they're good at leadership and they have excellent, they're an excellent communicator and they have good organisational skills. The system analyst has the role to liaise with the end user to gather information on the system they want delivered, what they want the new system to do, what their current problems are and the current processes used. Their characteristics include that they're a good listener, they're a good communicator, they're a good problem solver, they're creative and they're a team worker. The programmer is the person responsible for writing the code and, they're, and it's written from the modules designed in spec docs. Once developed it must be tested and if any bugs then they must be removed. The characteristics are that they're excellent technical, logical, mathematical ability and they have experience in writing code. The analysis stage is our next topic. The techniques used are an interview, questionnaire, observation and document analysis. An interview has its advantages as they can adjust the questions as the interview proceeds, they have direct control of the user, they ask specific questions and they target all levels of the organisation. Disadvantages though is that the t it's time consuming so costly, poor interviewing can lead to misleading or insufficient information and incorrect info may be deliberately given. Questionnaire has advantages such as it's cheaper than interviews, it saves time and it's generally anonymous. Disadvantages is that it's expensive to produce, there's no opportunity to capture detailed information and the analysis may take time. Observation advantages, workloads and methods of working and bottlenecks can be identified. You can actually see what happens in the organisation and it shows the flow of information. This advantage is it's time consuming and costly, problems may not occur and employees may be resentful. Document analysis is good for obtaining factual information and you can get a good overview of the organisation. It can also determine relevance of existing documentation, but it can become out of date if not correctly maintained and it only provides background information. Functional and non-functional requirements. Functional requirements describe what a software system should do and the individual features such as reports and what data to be entered. They're easy to test, they define all the services required and it must be provided. If it's not made, the system has failed and it's directly related to the business. Non-functional requirements places constraints on how the system will perform and is related to the system as a whole. They're difficult to test. If they're not met, then the system's unusable. It also defines system properties and constraints, but it's related directly to improving the performance of the business. Data flow diagrams and context diagrams, which are level 0 DFDs. The purpose of a DFD is to show what kind of information will be input to and output from a system, where the data will come from and go to and where data will be stored. Common parts are including data flows such as the path data takes for a system represented by a labelled arrow line, processes which is when data is transferred by a process and it is anything that causes data to be changed in some planned way, external entities need to define external things that have an effect but are not part of the system itself and a data store which is keeping a persistent copy of data and supporting various processes and use a double line when this is repeated.
Context diagrams are a way of pictorially representing an entire system. It is a level nod data flow diagram. What makes it up? A single process, any number of external entities, any number of required data flows, but there's no data stores. This is a example. And this is an example of the context. Storyboarding. A storyboard is a representation of everything that will be contained in the program including sketches and lists of each of its contents and how they will be organised. A good storyboard reduces cost and dev time. The advantage is that it helps in organise and focus the project. Errors may be found as a result of producing a storyboard. It doesn't require programming or artistic skills. It's a great way to design user interfaces and it's good for prototyping. A good storyboard has enough detail to allow third party implementation with the font size and style, background colours and images, navigation of elements, position of graphics such as company logo and details of the text in an outline form. Prototyping Prototyping is a method of producing an incomplete version of a digital technology system and it shows the layout of a system interface to help the end user understand how a system operates. It's not usually accepting any real input data, processes or output results, but it doesn't provide a full working solution but opportunities for a solution to improve through feedback and suggested improvements. Evolutionary prototyping is an incomplete version of the final system developed and presented to the end user. Feedback and refinement process continues until the user is presented with a fully operational system which meets all the user requirements. Throwaway prototyping is when the prototype is not part of the final solution as the model is developed to help support discussion between the end user and developer and the prototype is, is discovered after feedback and the system is developed using an alternative development method. Pause here for the advantages and disadvantages of prototyping overall. Approaches to prototyping. The waterfall model. A variety of stages completed in particular order to develop a digital application and each stage leads up to the next one in sequential order. No stage can begin until the one before it's been completed. Iterative, iterative development is development team breaks down development of an application into smaller manageable tasks with each having its own system life cycle and at the end of the SLC the development is reviewed and changes are required are built into the next iteration. Errors are detected early this way. Systems. System design. The main purpose is to produce a document called a system spec, and the documents include details on the output, screen design, and report spec. Inputs such as macro storyboards, career design tools, data processing within the system, the test plan on how the system is going to be thoroughly tested before the installation, and the data structure, including data models, DFDs, normalization, and the database structure. System design and the user interface. The design must take into consideration who is going to use the system, what task the computer is performing, the environment in which the computer is to be used, and what technology is feasible. And the system design input screen. When designing the input screen, the following points need to be kept in mind. The screen isn't too cluttered. The screen or display has a title to identify it. Colors are carefully used. The font size and font styles are considered, and users are able to correct their entries before submitting them. System development involves coding the new system from scratch, but if there's existing software package used, then they need to be made bespoke for that company, and this involves tailoring certain aspects of the software and screen designs and reports that are output. Systems testing. The purpose is to ensure once the system is complete, it works exactly as it should do. Various testing methods are used along with the test plan, detailing what is to be tested and under what circumstances. Testing strategies are part of the designer's job to come up with a testing strategy, which will ensure that all parts of the IT system is purposely tested. Testing. Testing is a process of detecting errors in a piece of software. An infinite amount of test values are applied to a piece of software. Various techniques are applied to aid selection of test cases and they force out the largest number of errors. It's split into white and black box techniques. Black box is inputs and outputs and has no understanding of what is happening within the system and it only considers inputs and outputs. It doesn't consider what happens within the system and if the system reacts properly to various inputs and the test has been passed. White box testing is an uh, analyze the structure and logic of an application code and it's used both to monitor depth and testing guide selection of appropriate data causing areas of code that run have not, have not yet been executed. It's not only concerned with end results but also with how the program behaves internally. Unit testing is when programmers complete each section of software. 
Testing sections on their own help to isolate problems and make detecting them easier than it would be testing what is left to the end. It's performed by programmers as they have the knowledge of internal program design. Integration testing is when components work together, completed and tested together. Uh, this approach avoids the issue of finding a large number of problems on a completed system and having no idea which components are responsible. System application or application testing is a completed system exam and including evaluating it as end users would. Serious problems are found and corrected at this stage. Finished system compared to requirements set out following the analysis. This is done by following the test plan. Accessing testing is testing implementation complete customer compared to the final system with what they were accept expecting. This determines whether users accept the system or not and it involves testing the software by end users in a live environment with real volumes of data. The end user testing system ensures it meets their user requirements and the end users feedback to the developer any issues arising. Alpha testing is a type of acceptance testing and the software's nearest development performed to identify all possible issues before releasing a product for everyday users. It simulates real users by black and white box testing and it carries out tasks that a typical user might perform. The advantage is that it provides a better view and readability of software at an early stage and many design changes may be as a result of testing and defects many serious errors. The disadvantage is that the software is still under development at this stage and sometimes developers and testers are dissatisfied with the results of, al of alpha testing. Beta testing is a form of testing that takes place after alpha testing and the software is given to a number of potential users forming a pre-release version. Users are good to test the system and realistic system environment providing feedback to the developer. The goal is to get user feedback on the product and make changes in the software accordingly. It's performed by real users. The advantage is that it improves product quality via customer feedback, reducing product failure risk via customer validation and it creates a good role with the customers and increased customer satisfaction. The disadvantage is that test management is an issue. Beta testing is executed in the real world with seldom control and finding the right beta users and maintaining participation could be a challenge. Quality indicators are suitability affecting this and usability and the software is useless if your users don't like it. Beta testing helps provide authentic feedback of your software from real users. Testing can be conducted at any stage in development but in order for it to be carried out effectively it must be well planned and documented. A test plan is normally produced at the design stage. The contents include an introduction, which is a summary of an application and particular areas being tested. The testing approach, black box, white box, alpha or beta. The testing strategy should include an individual number for each test so it can be easily identified. Description of what to be tested. Examples of test data. The expected outcomes of each completed test. The actual test outcomes and then the comments about the outcome. Data. When an actual result is not expected, then the development team can modify the system and further testing can take place. The three reasons for testing is to test the system works under normal data, to test the system works with extreme data, when the test for response is erroneous or incorrect data is entered. Normal data is data that is valid and the program will accept. Abnormal data is data that should be rejected when entered and should be invalid and not accepted. And extreme data is data that pushes the boundaries. Implementation Implementation refers to the process of putting the design elements into practice. The installation of a new computerized system will include hardware installation, file conversion, and staff training. Parallel, in this instance, the old system and the new system will operate side by side for a short period of time. Pause here for the advantages and disadvantages of parallel implementation. The right implementation is a method that involves discontinu discontinuing the old system and immediately replacing it with the new system. There is no overlap between the old and the new. And once again, pause here for the advantages and disadvantages for direct implementation. Today's implementation is where the instance of parts of system will be replaced by the new system while the remainder of the system continues to operate using the old information system. Once more, pause here for the advantages and disadvantages of phased implementation. Pilot implementation is similar in many ways to phased implementation but only some of the data from the old system will be processed by the new system. And finally, once more, pause here for the advantages and disadvantages of pilot implementation. All the red is the key points. Data conversion and maintenance. Data conversion is the process of converting or transferring data from existing system to a new system. It needs to be verified and validated and it involves both software and human intervention. System maintenance is a it forms an important part of the development process as it ensures the system continues to run smoothly following implementation. All software requires maintenance. Corrective maintenance is when action is taken following a system or component failure after the software has been delivered. Although errors or issues may however arise following a, devel a development stage, the system is in operation and actions taken include issuing a software patch problems frequently surface after the system has been in use for a short time, however thoroughly it was tested. 
Adaptive maintenance is any modification of a software product performed after delivery in response to the change in the environment within which the software is used to meet changing user requirements. In the dynamic nature of most working environments, means some form of adaptive ma maintenance is inevitable. Need for a high level of adaptive maintenance early after release of package, however, indicates user requirements are not adequately defined from the outset. All systems need to adapt to change in needs within a company. Perfective maintenance is, a, is an amendment made to the software product following the initial delivery to help improve the performance of the software. While it may run satisfactorily, there is still room for improvement and the developer takes the opportunity to upgrade the code aiming to be more efficiently. I, high level perfective ma maintenance early on following the package release indicates user requirements are lacking in sufficient detail. Approaches to system development. The waterfall model. This lets the developer move through the phases of development in order, but with, the, but with the option to return to the previous phases if needed. It's useful to return to the previous stage if they encounter a problem or need to change your plan. Each stage of development flows on from the previous stage and a review takes place ensuring the project is on the correct path. The following each end of the phase, a review decision is made to continue or discard. No stages of the waterfall overlap and testing only takes place when implementation is complete. Here are the advantages and disadvantages for the waterfall model. Rapid Application Development or RAD. This type of incremental model as a whole project is subdivided into a series of builds, each of which undergoes its own separate uh, life cycle, passing through requirements, design, implementation, and testing phases. It's developed in parallel and given time frame to produce working prototype which delivered to the user for feedback, and this quickly provides the customer with something to see and use. The stages of RAD include business modeling, which is a complete analysis of the business carried out determining data objects established. Process modeling, which is a process description, the kind of addition or modification to the data object identified at the stage. Application generation is the actual system developed using automated tools generating code for the final product. The testing and turnover, where prototypes are tested at each iteration, the overall testing time is reduced, the application interface and data flows between components are tested thoroughly. Here are the advantages and disadvantages for rapid application development. Agile model is, allows a product to be worked on and refined repeatedly. The development may begin with a small part of the product that is added to for each stage. The product is worked on, changed and improved iteratively. A small part of the product meeting some of the requirements next version may have additional features added to meet the further requirements. The project is repeated until the final product is developed and the project is split into a number of independent modules. This represents a combination of iterative and incremental model as the main aim is to satisfy the rapid delivery of a working product in response to the customer needs. Here are the advantages and disadvantages of the Agile model. Data backup. Data archiving is storage of information for a long period of time. It consists of information that is still important to the organization, not of immediate use but importance for future reference. It consists of data that must be retained for a, for a period of time to comply with legislation for auditing purposes. The importance of backup and recovery is that the process making copies of software or data in case the original is lost or damaged means if a system failure, then the data can be rebuilt accurately and if corrupt or lost data replaces and copies from the backup process. A full backup copies all the data files to provide a complete picture of the data at a given moment in time. A differential backup is when you copy only those data files that have changed into the last full backup and restoring all the data you need, the last full backup and the last differential backup. An incremental backup copies only those data files that have been changed into the last backup of any type. These are the full backup advantages and disadvantages. These are the differential backup advantages and disadvantages. Finally, here are the incremental backup advantages and disadvantages. A disaster recovery plan or a DRP is a documented set of procedures to recover and protect the IPT part of the business in the event of a disaster. A good disaster recovery plan incorporates a set of following procedures to support recovery of or continuation of a vital technology infrastructure following a natural, environmental or man-made disaster. Critical or key burdens are identified, back and recovery method is identified until the emergency is over or alternative location will be identified. The content includes the potential causes of the disaster, the scope of the plan identifying the areas of infrastructure covered by the plan, the policies to support continuity of the, of the infrastructure staff with responsibility also, the revision and testing plan which tests and reviews are based on a regular basis and finally a plan of action identifying each step of the recovery. Project Management 
Resources are in capital, development environment, the personnel such as developers and analysts, the stakeholders and hardware software. Constraints are restrictions placed on the limitation of a project, the scope of the project placed in the areas to be implemented as part of the project, such as the schedule and the cost. Risk is an element. User involvement, not involving the end user, leads to additional or changing new requirements leading to an increase in the cost of time delays. Scheduling flaws, inaccurate scheduling of tasks and inefficient deployment of staff leads to an entire project falling behind the deadline. The inflation of requirements, as is an ineffective consideration of the user requirements, this will lead to more new features being identified for adding in the project timeline. Specification breakdown, as the development team didn't understand the spec or the user didn't understand how the requirements were tied to the spec. Staff turnover, lots of key personnel needs to project delays and technology, familiarity of the project staff with the working team platform prior to have prior experience. Features to consider in project management. Software project management is management of any project where a piece of software is being planned and implemented. Features to consider include monitoring where the project monitoring is a key part as key activities are monitored. The PM will constantly be aware of the progress and software aids the monitoring process as progress reports provide an overview of the project. Scheduling is late delivery of projects or coffee so key deadlines are met across the scope. Key factors to consider are interdependency of tasks, task sequencing and parallelism. Budget. The budget is a major factor. Clients want to know how much a project is going to cost. The project costs are not escalated out of control. Resources. Project resources are considered to be the people, equipment, facilities and anything else necessary for the, for the successful completion of the project. Gantt charts are a type of bar chart used to show the start and finish dates of various elements. Critical path analysis is when the project is completed in the shortest time and pr in the project activity so as to minimise delays and to ensure that any conflicts are delayed. The CPA helps managers calculate the minimum time needed to complete a project. Information needed for CPA is that all activities and tasks, time to take for each task, dependencies among activities. The CPA calculates the longest path of planned activities to end the project, the EST early start time, the latest finish time LFT, and without making the project longer and activities critical on the longest path, having the total float can be delayed without making project longer. Critical path is the shortest time possible to complete the project and as important as any delay directly impacts the planned project completion date if there's no float or slack time on the critical path. Version management is a monitoring of changes to the system during development. The source is tracked, who made the change, why and enhancements made. The changes can be reversed if necessary and it ensures everyone involved are working on the same systems. Here are the advantages and disadvantages of a Gantt chart. Here are the advantages and disadvantages of a critical path analysis. User guide and technical document. Documents are used to support the planning and development and maintenance of a system, in addition to supporting the end user as they use them in a system. The both system analysts and programmers are responsible for maintaining standards and documentation on a project. Why are they needed? The tech dog is required so anybody carrying out future maintenance understands how the system is developed and how it's configured. The technical documentation is how the system works. It's written for professional involving the design, implementation and test and eventual maintenance. It should include the recovery procedures, program code, test documents and design documents. The user guide provides user information they need to support them in a successful use of a piece of hardware or software, not including the technical detail as users tend to be non-technical. The end user does not need to know how the system works, only what it can do. And this should include the instructions to install the application, instructions to start to start using how to exit it, the explanations and error messages and troubleshooting section. IDE or Integrated Development Environment An IDE or Integrated Development Environment is the source code allowing a software application, the writing of applications and managing projects. The IDE normally consists of a source code editor, build automation tools and a debugger. Common IDEs include Eclipse and Xcode. When choosing the right IDE you have to ask it to support your OS, does it support the programming language and is the IDE open source or commercial? Features include that it can compile code, debug code, run your program, test code, it has a built-in translator and it has a source code editor. The programming environment. A computer program is a specific set of ordered instructions performed by the computer. A machine is a set of instructions made available by the hardware design of a processor and the instruction is made up of bytes. The source code is a series of language statements written to solve a problem and the source code editor is a basic window entering the source code which programmers write, edit and save the document of code. Code editors provide a clipboard where the ID remembers the last number of items copied, the code outlining which collapses and expands is selected range of code, the code suggests an IntelliSense which is when items needed to complete a statement, the IntelliSense provides a pop-up insertion of lists of available functions, statements, constraints or values to choose from. 
line numbering which distinguishes between the lines in the length coding sections, and syntax error assistance which is where wavy, wavy lines are beneath the code that is incorrect or could cause a problem. Red lines are syntax errors, blue lines are semantic errors, and green lines are warnings. The compiler process is an executable file and is compiled with any additional libraries created in the machine code version of the program. A library is a collection of resources used by a computer program to perform functions, and the advantage of this is that resources are reused by different programs and the, pro and the program isn't compiled unless it's error free. The GUI allows the developer to create Windows applications positioning controls by dragging them from a toolbox. The Solution Explorer is a graphical representation of the entire solution, and debugging is containing logic pro problems becoming apparent up in runtime if they're syntactically correct and not providing the correct result. The debuggers usually help detect and correct such problems. Runtime errors cause the program to crash even if it appears not in wrong with the program code. Syntax errors are mistakes in the way the code is written, and semantic errors are the way the program works but produces different results from what is expected. The translation process. The three main types of translators, compilers, interpreters, and assemblers. Execution is a process of running a program and carrying out of the operation called for by an instruction. The interpreter is slower than compiled and it processes one line at a time or translates it. The interpreter finds an error then it stops. The programmer can then see exactly where the problem in the program is and it's easier to debug than compile code. The compiler is ha so when it's once compiled then the translated program is directly used by the computer. It's independently executable. The compiler converts the program into machine code before executing it and the statements are not constructed correctly then a generated list of errors which are fixed by changing the original source code. The assembler converts assembly programs into machine code instructions and mnemonics are quite close to the machine code. Programs run very quickly compared to compiled and interpreted programs. Programming. Not to be confused with the, pro confused with the programming environment. The algorithm has a set of rules or steps that represent the solution to a problem and helps design a solution in order of steps is important. Syntax is the rules governing how statements and languages should be, should, should be structured and the rules specify how commands should be used to create statements. A statement is a single line of code performing a task and the number of statements makes up the source code. The language statements don't follow syntax and runtime errors are generated. A variable is a name and location the computer's memory used to hold a specific data value which the, the program is running. You take on a different value during the course of a program execution. And data type is when you're designing the solution, the programmer must decide the name and data type for each variable to be used. The sequence is when instructions are contained in the programmer's solution and they perform the order which they are used. Selection allows decisions to be made within the program using if and else statements. If the condition describes a particular relationship between a pair of variables or a variable and a constant, if then a value is a true statement and then the following then will be executed, if then else the program alternative statement is executed if the initial condition is false. Repetition is achieved for the use of loops. Count control loops are unconditional repetitions. When the instructions inside the loop are executed a set number of times and the loop counter is used at the set an initial value at the beginning and each time it's executed the loop counter will be incremented. The condition control loops continue until the loop required when you wish to execute a particular task more than once. For loops are only used whenever you know in advance how many times you wish to carry out the instruction but if you don't know then you use the condition control loops. Object Oriented Programming or OOP. Object-oriented programming is the making use of objects when designing and building applications. An object is an element of a program performing actions and interacting with other elements of a program. Properties are the attributes describing the objects. A class is the building block specifying the properties and methods and it's a blueprint describing the details of the project. It's defined by the name, data members and the member functions. Encapsulation is when the class hides elements within the structure and the class can be reused within a number of applications. Method is a section of code or procedure containing the class defining an action of an object of, a, of that class can perform. Inheritance is when a new class inherits properties and methods of, of the existing class. The new class is called derived child or subclass and the existing class is called the base parent or superclass. Derived class inherits all the properties and, and methods of the base class. The advantage of this is that new properties and methods are, defi are defined for the derived class and the base class can be reused defining new and more specialized classes. The derived class has, has shared and unique properties and methods. These inherited methods can be redefined or overrun. The advantage is that classes and methods created in one object oriented application is, re is reused in other programs so faster development lowers overall cost. The extent of planning phase means better designs and fewer flaws so less time spent in maintenance and it also improves the software quality. 
Disadvantages that the concepts, inheritance, and, and encapsulation are difficult to understand, so the steep learning curve. Programmers learn extensive class libraries and program runtime with costs as dynamic dispatching. Thank you for watching. Good luck on your exam.